Over 20 years ago, Tony Hawk teamed up with Activision to change the face of sports games forever. The combination of adrenaline pumping tricks, insane combo lines, incredible level design and an awesome soundtrack meant that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was an instant classic. A year later, the second game stepped things up further. Levels had set pieces, secret areas and new challenges. Skaters had new moves, adding even more variety to combo lines. The soundtrack is one of the greatest ever compiled, and you could even now create your own parks and skaters to play with. These games shaped so much of my own and many other people's childhood, so when this remaster of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 was announced, it's safe to say the pressure was on to deliver especially given the garbage fire of recent attempts to revive the series. But deliver, they most definitely have. Vicarious Visions have taken all the best parts of the titular games they've remastered, some quality of life elements from later games, and a light sprinkling of modernizations to create one of the greatest nostalgia highs yet. Given their past success in bringing Crash Bandicoot back into the limelight, they were the perfect studio to breathe life back into this series. Let's start with the obvious upgrades. The game looks gorgeous. All the levels have been meticulously remodelled with great looking textures and stunning lighting. If I could have imagined photorealistic looking versions of these stages in my youth, this is exactly how I would have imagined them. The mall level from Pro Skater 1 looks long abandoned and run down, the skate parks look well skated but smooth, and the hangar is filled with loving tributes to the studio that originally brought this series to its dizzying heights, Neversoft. The skaters featured actually all look like the real deal, and I love the fact that they chose to model them on their current appearances, rather than taking an uncanny valley approach and making them all 20 years younger. Speaking of which, not only is the old gang back together in its entirety, but a fresh roster of younger pro skaters have also been added to the game. Including, but not limited to, Birdman Jr, Riley Hawk, Niger Houston and Lizzie Armanto. Most of the classic soundtrack is back, and it sounds just as great now as it did back then. There are a few tracks that couldn't be brought back thanks to licensing issues, but long-standing favourites from Lagwagon, Goldfinger, Bad Religion and Mill & Colin are still there. Alongside the classics, new tracks from artists such as Billy Talent, Skepta and Machine Gun Kelly have been brought in to fill the missing slots and further pad out the oral experience. All the new additions fit really well with the classics but don't carry quite the same weight of nostalgia. One mod con I do really like is the ability to skip the track at any time by clicking the right stick, meaning if you're not feeling the current song, you're able to skip ahead without breaking pace. Gameplay wise, the entirety of the classic games are still intact. It's truly a testament to how good Vicarious Visions are at capturing the feel of a classic game in a modern package that all of my old muscle memory kicked straight in. Some additions from later games in the series have been brought in as well to help build combos higher and improve the overall flow, like acid drops, grind and manual modifiers, and leveling out in mid-air. All the classic objectives you remember have returned, including skate letters, various other collectathons, tiered scores, and secret tapes to find. Skating well for a time without bailing will fill your special meter and allow you to pull off high-scoring special tricks. For the veterans, this will all feel like pretty standard stuff, but on top of those, there's also the newer addition of challenges to complete for individual levels and skaters. These challenges are likely what will keep players coming back post-game, and look like the kind of thing that could be regularly updated to keep things fresh. Completing challenges levels you up, unlocking new cosmetic items for customising your skaters and parks, and new slots for special tricks. It's not essential by any means, but it is a nice way to pad out what could have otherwise felt like a fairly content like game compared to other modern titles. As with the classic games, you can improve the skaters you play with by finding stat points hidden around the levels. Progression carries across both games, meaning you might feel over-leveled by the time you hit the second one if you're playing them in order. However, stat progression is individual to each skater, so this can be fairly easily mitigated by just picking a new skater to play with. It's another nice thing to keep you occupied after finishing the main objectives, but it can feel a bit of a chore if that's all you're looking to do. If you're struggling with the game, or just fancy taking the chore of balancing out of the equation, Perfect balance cheats can be switched on or off from the menu at any time. Scores racked up with these switched on are tracked separately as well, so you don't need to worry about younger siblings going on and creating impossible leaderboards for you to contend with. Single session returns as a two minute run in any level to get as many points as you can, and I'm excited to see what kind of insane scores top the leaderboards in the coming weeks. If you just want to enjoy a casual skate and enjoy the remastered scenery, free skate is an option from the start, and you can pick any level you want without having to unlock them. As is the modern standard, online multiplayer is a feature with all the classic modes from past games, like combo challenge, score attack, graffiti and horse. If online is less your speed but you're still feeling the multiplayer itch, then rejoice because local split screen multiplayer has made its way back into the game as well. A feature all too often overlooked by modern developers. 
The Park Editor has received a welcome revamp, helping it feel up to date in 2020. Parks can be made in the classic way, with a range of pre-made ramps, props and scenery, but the real standouts are the new smart obstacles. These allow you to create snake runs, bowls, fun boxes, stair sets and rails you could have only dreamed of before. Parks can then be shared online for other players to download, skate and rate to their heart's content. One thing that does feel like a missed opportunity, especially in a modern game, is the lack of any replay editor or photo mode. Given the significance of videos and photos in real skateboarding, and that a replay editor was a feature in the older games, the lack of inclusion feels confusing, particularly when there's a drone flying around some of the levels. It's not a deal breaker by any means and could be easily added in an update, but it would have been nice to have it at launch. Overall, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 is an astounding success. As a skateboarder in real life, there's a lot to be said for the rise of more realistic skate sims like the EA series that overshadowed the fall of the Tony Hawk series, and more recent reinventions from indie developers like Skater XL and Session. But I have this series to thank for getting into skateboarding in the first place, and sometimes you just can't beat the adrenaline rush of blazing speeds, dizzying gaps, insane scores, and ridiculous combos. I can't wait to see what the future holds for the series' triumphant return, hopefully with Pro Skater 3 DLC, maybe even a remaster of Pro Skater 4 and Underground. Until then, you can catch me flying over the leap of faith, pretending I'm a Superman for months to come. Commandeered this wagon just to chase your ass.